Hello YouTube, this is APC, and today I make another tutorial. This tutorial was crushed by Last Lender. He mentioned that, um, and all my, basically all my tutorials so far, I've always made sprites with one sub image, and you want to know how would you program games that have more sub images than one, than one, or maybe even involve multiple sprites. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, because really, organizing your game in several sprites makes it a lot nicer. So let me go through what I've changed from the original platformer. I've taken away the original player sprite and I've created these four alpha sprites. This one's for when we want the player to stand, this one's for when we want the player to walk, this one's when we want the player to jump, this one's for when we want the player to attack. Now we're just going to use these to organize in the game to make sure that we have that code correctly. But once we got that figured out, we're going to move on to these sprites. I'm going to post a link in the description for you to where you can get these. I, these are the Alucard sprites used in the Castlevania game series. And they all have a little animation to them and it looks very cool. Alright, so let's work on getting these set first. There are also a few changes that I've made to our player. This being, I've changed away the round that he moves from left to right. So rather than ha doing just left check, I add the pressed. So the moment it gets pressed, he starts moving, and he keeps moving indefinitely until we say, him stop and we tell him to stop when it's released right down here and we set HP to zero. So this is pretty simple but I think I talked about this in my second or third platforming tutorial but this is just another way of doing it and it'll work better for what we're trying to do today. Okay so now we want to create a variable to show what we're doing right now what sprite we're on. So we're gonna do that is we're gonna call the variable status set equal to zero. I'm going to create a little comment here too, just to show what each one means. So at zero, I'm just going to, this is just for organization purposes, so none of this holds any significance. You can organize it whenever you want, but I'm going to say zero is our standing sprite. And one, I'm going to say that's our walking sprite. Two, let's say that's our jumping sprite. And three, let's say that's attacking, because those are the four sprites in the organized set. So I'm going to copy this so that we know what working with in the sub event. Paste it right down here. Now, so for standing, you want to stand whenever you're not doing anything. So, whenever you release the left to right button, you'll be standing quickly, still you're not moving. So, we're gonna say status equals zero there. And right, or when you press left to right, then you start moving. So, we want to go some sort of the walking, right? So, status equals one. And the same goes here, status equals one. And then uh, down here when we when we jump, we want to set jumping sprite, so status equals two, because that's what we decide down here. And now we got we got attacking, so we need to add a line of code just to figure out the attacking in the first place. So we're gonna say if keyboard check pressed, very importantly, press there, BK, sorry, BK space. Then we want our status. Three. Simple enough. Alright, so now let's create another section and call, and call it Sprite Organization. So I'm just going to go to future status variable and status variable. If status equals zero, you want our standing sprite. So sprite index equals SPR stand. If status equals one, we want a walking sprite. So then we say sprite index equals SPR walk. If status equals two, then we want our jumping sprite. So we say sprite index equals SPR jump. And space here. And for the last one, if status equals three, we want our attacking sprite. So we say sprite index index equals SPR attack alright so now we've, we've basically got it all figured out we can go in and test it but um when you organize a lot of sprites there's, you, you'll notice when you test it there's a little bit of oddities like the way we have it set up now let's say we jump in the air and then we press left right button then status switch to one and you'll be walking in midair we don't want that 
We only want, if we're in the air, we always want to have the jump sprite. So, we'll just make sure that we're not in the air before we set it. So, if not place three, x, y plus one, then we want to set status. This way it won't look weird. And there's one more audio I want to address, is that, let's say we're holding the left button, and then press space bar. Then it'll start the attacking animation, or in this case not animation, it'll start attacking sprite, and it'll keep sliding to the left. We don't want that either. So we're gonna, when, it, when we start attacking, we want H speed equals zero, along with the tanking sprite. Has standing still sprite, and standing still, so that's good. Move to the left, switch to our walking sprite. Good too. If I jump, switch to the jumping sprite, and even if I move left or right while, I, while we're jumping, it doesn't switch to the walking sprite, which is also good. If I, if I press spacebar, switch to attacking sprite, and even if I walk and press spacebar, it stops in its tracks, which is good. Alright, so now we got our sprites organized. Now we're going to switch off to these nice a la carte sprites. We want to decide what image speed we want for each of them when we set it. So if we say Alucard stand. We want to decide what image we want. Okay, so let's look at the Alucard sprite. Okay, we want to make so what we're checking now is whether that'll be able to loop over and over again, and it'll look okay just saying image speed. Or do we need to fix the image next um, manually? And I say it looks fine. All right, so let's put our code, and I'll say. Image speed equals 0.25. All right, and so now let's go into the walking sprite. That looks hard. Walk, and again let's check image speed. All right, so that one also looks like a perfectly good animation that we can loop over and over again. So to say, image. Equals 0.25, and now let's get to the hard one. The jumping sprite. So say Alucard jump. This one, as you can see here, isn't the kind of sprite that you want just to play over and over again. It looks weird. So let me explain to you why it looks weird. The way it's supposed to work is it initially starts with this one, it's jumping upward, and then when it starts slowing down, it starts moving down almost. It goes this one, then when it's moving down, it goes that one. So let me, let's draw, let me draw you a little picture of how that would look like. First off, let's just add some more space here because it required more space. And now, let's set image speed equal to zero because we want to fix the manual. Alright, here's your picture. We have the red line where our players can jump along. So how do we know where along the line we should, we should have we should right? All right, so I'm going to split into three sections, and there you can see each sprite that we're going to be using. From the, so this is basically like changing the image index variable for each section. And then the question is, how do we decide when it ch changes one section to the other? Well, this variable used to indicate that, and that variable is v speed. You can see when we're moving up, if you're moving upwards, then the v speed is negative. If you move downwards, v speed is positive. That's basic game maker stuff. You can't just say if it's negative, go with the up sub image. Or say if it's positive, go with the down sub image, because then we would completely cut out the center one. So we want to create a little section that, that is around the area of zero where we want to have the seconds, right? So the the point where I chose, if it's between negative four and four, it'll be the top of the parabola sprite, and if it's lower than negative four, it'll be the going up sprite, and if it's higher than negative four, it'll be the going down sprite. So let's code that right now. We'll start off with the going up sprite. So if v speed is less than negative 4, we want to have the going up sprite. That would be image index equals 0. Otherwise, we want it, we know that it's either the uh, top of the parabola thing or it's going down. So we'll say, so let's check if that's top of the parabola thing. So if v speed 
less than 4, say less than equal to, because it's we're going to make inclusive. Play one image index equal 1. So now we know that it's not going up one or the top the parabola one. So that rules out that it must be the last one. Image index equals 2. Okay. So this is what makes bright. This is what you this is the kind of thing you need to do when um, it's set up in a way where you need to manually organize each image index. There we go. This could get a lot longer. Like in, in the, the sprite I actually got this from there like 18 sub images, but this one was only three, so it's a little bit easier. So now let's go into our attack mode, which can be it's a, a little bit different from the standing and walking, but it's not gonna be quite as tricky as jumping. Alright. So that's a good anim it's good animation, it just plays through nicely. But we don't want him to punch over and over again at any attacks and keep punching until we move or something like that. So we're gonna need to keep that in mind. Alright, so image speed equals 0.25. That's fine. Sorry. 0.25. And of course we got a chance to write to add a card. And so now there's another thing we need to pay attention to. These are these are our two walking um, looping animations so far. And with both of them, it doesn't matter where they start. So image next equal anything when we start walking. But for the attacking sprite, it's very important that we start at the beginning. It wouldn't do just to have it start at the last frame and then start over. That just wouldn't look nice. So when we first start attacking, this is why it's important that we put press right here. We want image index to equal zero. Let's say we're halfway through our animation for the attacking. Um, then we press left button halfway through the animation. Then we don't want to clip straight back to the to the walking animation. So, as one of our parameters for starting to walk, we want to also make sure that status is not three. So status is not equal to three. Same thing over here, and same thing over here. Which is why I need to have these parentheses right here. Now, once it gets the end of our animation, we'll say animation end. then we want it to go back to what it would be otherwise, which in this case would be the standing stride. So if status 3, then we want to switch over to 0. Okay. Alright, looks good. Now, as you can see, when I move right, it looks fine. But, and if I jump, that looks good too. And if I attack, it looks good as well. So, it looks like we're done, but there's one thing that we need to do. It's facing right right now. If we move left, you see it's doing a moonwalk thing, which we don't want. We want to face the direction that it's moving. So the way we fix that is using a variable called image x scale. So, we'll start off the right. When we move to the right, we want image x scale to equal 1. One is normal. One, one, we don't change x scale at all. 0.5, we we sort of squish it down to half what it is. But if we go below that, like negative, it'll mirror over the x axis or the y axis actually. Yeah, it'll mirror over the y axis if we put negative number. So for this one, we want to put one. And then if we move left, we want to mirror itself. So say image at scale equals negative one. All right, now it should look 100% good. There we go. Looks great. That's exactly how I want it to look. Do, do punching. That's good. All right, so that's how you would organize sprites in a more complex game than I've been talking about at up to this point. When you organize sprites, one thing you need to be aware is be, be prepared to be going back and forth fixing glitches. All right, this is off the list now. That's it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys next time.